It's falling. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll keep the introduction very, very short. Um, introducing the forum, I'll keep it very short, all right? Um, okay, uh, Corey, the, sorry, Kevin, check us on the Facebook for um, jamaicans.com quickly. Presentation. I wasn't able to share screen, you know, so you it, will... It, it's live. It's live, Nathaniel. I can see you. You're the only face that's on the video at the moment. All right. Live. All right. Let, let's, let's check, Kevin, if um, when we speak, it, it switches over. All right. Is that, is that fine? Or it's, oops, yeah, man, it seems to I'm be switching on. Okay. It's switching face, yes? Switching faces, yes? Thumbs up. All right, great. Good, good. All right, so we're going to start letting people in, Nathaniel. Yep. All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, diaspora. Good afternoon, friends in Jamaica. Good afternoon, friends of Jamaica. Wherever you're joining us from across the world, we welcome you um, to this very, very important discussion. Um, as you are fully aware, this is Diaspora Week. Um, so we're engaging the diaspora in a conversation that is very pertinent. Um, you have always been asking us for this type of forum and we have facilitated your request. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very distinguished panel to deliver some information to you today. And I am sure, I am going out on a limb to say that I am sure that you will be informed for your next move. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Diaspora Cross-Border Webinar. And as I mentioned, we have got the Jamaica Stock Exchange joining us today, as well as the Jamaica Social Stock Exchange, Honing Family. Also, we've got Victoria Mutual Wealth Management um, joining us today as well. Ladies and gentlemen, I am going to do the formalities in this fashion. Simple. Welcome. Let's talk. Let's get involved. Let's make a difference. Let's make it happen. I've seen, I'm seeing so many smiles already. And that is a great start. Very, very good start. Ladies and gentlemen, what we will be doing now is letting you know who we have amongst us. We have Mrs. Marlene Street Forest. Base honors, and of course, a master in business administration. Mrs. Marlene Street Forest is the managing director of Jamaica Stock Exchange, JSC, and we will be referring to the Jamaica Stock Exchange as JSC as we go along in the discussion. And director of both its subsidiaries, her mandate is to continue the process of developing the JSC group and particularly the exchange in an atmosphere of transparency and fairness while utilizing appropriate technology in providing the greatest possible efficiency to the market. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you will play a very important role in that marketplace. Mr. Street Forest has a wealth of experience, having worked in the senior management position at varying private and public sector organizations here in Jamaica and overseas. 
It is under her stewardship that the JC became hmm, demutualized. Keyword demutualized. And the US denominated market and the junior market were launched. She also spearheaded the registrar division of the Jamaica Central Depository, JCSD, when she served as general manager for the subsidiary of the JSE. Mrs. Street Forrest attended the University of the West Indies, Mona, where she read for the bachelor's degree in management studies and later gained her master's in, in, in business administration at the Barry University in Florida. She did not choose United Kingdom nor Canada. She did it in the USA. Love her nonetheless. In 2016, Mrs. Street Forrest was conferred with the honor of the Order of Distinction in the rank of Commander CD in recognition of her outstanding leadership in the growth of the Jamaica Stock Exchange. In, in that same year, she also received the Afro Global Excellence Award for Global Impact from Canada for exhibiting great leadership, vision, <laughs> integrity, and commitment to excellence. She was an Observer Business Leader nominee in 2017 and was also celebrated by the Institute for Gender and Development Studies, UE, as a woman pioneer. In 2018, she received the Rotary Club of Kingston East and Port Royal Vocational Services Award and was recently recognized by the Alex Heyama School of Greatness as the business leader of the decade. Mr. Street Forrest is a justice of the peace and serves as a director of the Good Samaritan Inn, a Christian outreach aimed at uplifting the poor and marginalized. Ladies and gentlemen, give a thumbs up, give a virtual clap for Mrs. Marlene Street Forrest, managing director of the JSE. Also joining us, we have two diasporan stalwarts. We have in Mr. Nathaniel Pete, chair of Jamaicans Inspired, and of course, Mr. I should say, Dr. Kevin Brown, chair of the Jamaica Diaspora UK. Amongst those thorns, we have Daniel Ashley Jacobs, Wealth Advisor from the Victoria Mutual Wealth Management. And Daniel will be answering your questions, making a presentation of the process itself. Now, what is the other arm? Um, the JSSE, Jamaica Social Stock Exchange. Oh, okay. Now we have Miss Nora Blake, who will let us know what the JSSE is all about. The social entrepreneur who executed the launch of the Jamaica Social Ex um, Stock Exchange, JSSE, is a local pioneer in the area of social entrepreneurship. Keyword, entrepreneurship. A member of the first MBA cohort for social entrepreneurship at the UCC. Prior Prior to, she attended the University of the West Indies, obtaining the Bachelor's of Science degree in Natural Sciences with a minor in Commercial Law. As a social entrepreneur, she has acted as a facilitator for numerous micro-businesses operated by inner city residents and, the, and has extensive technical knowledge in micro and small business facilitation. Just like the common interest of many here on this webinar, you're entrepreneurs and you're also interested in additional stream of income. And you have expressed to us that yes, you would like to do a lot more online business. A special as advisor, technical officer in the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce with special interest in the MSME and entrepreneurship policy, she facilitated and provided oversight for the first ever 
Inner City Entrepreneurship Expo, highlighting Trenchtown as a place to do business. There, there, she also coordinated the draft of a bamboo policy for the emerging industry and was a member of the steering committee overseeing the local Bamboo Industry Association of Jamaica, BIAJ. An entrepreneur, as a real estate, real estate broker, she managed budget, staff, and physical resources to successfully operate in the niche markets of high-end residential sales and expatriate rentals and leases. Expatriate rentals and leases. In service as a teacher at the Wilmers Boys School in biology and chemistry at CXCO, O level and A level, her students attain a pass rate of over 87%. She has worked over the years in a voluntary capacity to see the development of a well defined community tourism product for Trench Town, which has helped to position the community as the birthplace of reggae music. With Airbnb statistics show to be the community with the highest level of requests in Jamaica on its booking site. I can attest to that. Through Pickney Friends, which she founded in 2002 to facilitate a higher le level of school attendance for marginalized children, bursaries for lunch, uniforms, and various needs are funded, such as summer school, spiritual enrichment, and treats for children in Trenchtown, Rosetown, and Whitfield Town, Maxfield Avenue. October 2018 to present, she is president of the Optimus Club of Trenchdown. 2018, founding director of the People Profile Jamaica. She has served on the board of the Agency of Inner City Renewal Air. And 2014 to 2017, that's the time she did that. She was a chairperson of the adjudication committee for the LAM, that's Land Titling Project in Rosetown, St. Andrew. And in former, in former webinars, we spoke about land issue. Now here is a lady with some experience. 2013 awarded a special prime minister's medal of appreciation for special Jamaica 50 celebrations for contribution to community service. 2013 appointed justice to peace for the parish of St. Andrew. Now, she has been awarded the National Building Award from the National Commercial Bank. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, thumbs up, hands together for Miss Nora Blake. Without further ado, I'd like to invite Miss, Mrs. Marlene Street Forest to take the platform and take us through this webinar today. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Marlene Street Forest. Good afternoon, everyone. I think it's afternoon or evening. Good day to you all. It is really a pleasure um, for me to be here in this webinar to share with you some information naturally about the Jamaica Stock Exchange and um, to answer questions in relation to your investment, um, how the market is doing, and I want to contextualize that um, from the standpoint that I know there has been a lot of interest in the market because we have been doing well in 2015. We were the best performing exchange in the world. In 2019, again, we were the best performing exchange in the um, 2018, the best performing exchange in the world. And in 2019, we were among the top five. And that means something. That means that our companies were doing well because it is based on the index. It means that our companies were performing well. And um, the thought now would be, how do we, given the global pandemic, how are we doing? How are we gonna be navigating this for investors and for the stock exchange and for Jamaica itself. And where do we see the exchange going forward and your investments? 
let me first speak about how the market has been doing overall. The market continues to be fair, efficient, and transparent. That is our motto, that is our tagline, that's what our, our we operate. We are still doing that for the benefit of our shareholders, the, the companies that are listed on the exchange. And we are still ensuring that our brokers or listed companies provide the relevant information to you as investors so that you can make informed decisions. Over the period 2015 to 2019, if one were to have invested in the stock market overall, all the, the companies or securities listed, you would have gained somewhere around 400 to 500 percent in your, on your investment. And the, the question now is, what is it going forward? Yes, the market has uh, um, the index as uh, supported by the index. There has been a decline um, after March 2020 during that period, the COVID period, of about 24%. But that is what, when you look around the world, you'll see that markets have generally declined. But what is it, what do I have to share with you now in terms of how we are seeing the market move since then? The market has moved relatively stable since that decline. And we have seen for the months of say um, January, um, the months of April, a 3.45 decline after. But then in May, we have picked up 5.67 over that. And in June, 1.72%. What this is saying to me is that persons are understanding that whereas there is some decline in prices, one, when you look at what are you to do with your investment, still the market provides one of the best avenues, the stock exchange, in terms of having the, those investments still there. Um, it is, and I want to quickly talk about that, it is that um, investors are urged not to panic. Investors are urged to look within your portfolio to see how you can diversify within that portfolio in terms of different companies given um, the relevance of COVID and what will probably transpire over the period. I want to also talk about um, between May and June of this year, where persons may have gone into market and sold. We have seen now between May and as we speak currently, that we had 30 stocks or securities advancing which is why when we talk to investors, we say, take time, do not panic, look within the market, look at what benefits you can derive from the market. And in so doing, you would make better and more informed decisions. Now, what we have found, however, is, and speaking to the diaspora, you may realize that we have what is called um, online trading platform. And since the onset of the pandemic, we have had over three, nearly 3,000 new investors using the online platform to access trading on the exchange. And we can go over that a little bit more. But what it means is that we are using technology to ensure that the diaspora is connected with Jamaica invest in Jamaica, grow wealth in Jamaica. And, and so post COVID, one would have said that although we are suffering with this pandemic, the exchange still provide information on all the listed companies, still provide an avenue of growth and still provide the technology that is necessary for good connectivity. I am gonna pause there because I know others will have um, things to say and that we can take your questions on investing in the still one of the best performing exchange in the market, utilizing the technology that we continue to build out 
to serve your needs. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Marlene Street Forrest, um, for your insight on the Jamaica Stock Exchange and why we should um, look towards that for investment and feedback into uh, Jamaica. There's a lot of other points there in, in that presentation that we can pull out for discussion um, later on. And at this point, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to invite you uh, this forum, this webinar, Ms. Laura Blake from the Jamaica Social Stock Exchange. Ladies and gentlemen, thumbs up and a hand clap virtually for Ms. Nora Blake. Take you off mute, um, Nora. Thank you. Good day. Corey, you're hearing me? Loud, loud and clear, loud and clear, Nora. Okay, thank you for having us and for hosting this um, groundbreaking webinar on the World Wide Net. Good afternoon to all who are tuned in. It's um, an honor to have an opportunity to share some more on the Social Stock Exchange. Of course, the Social Stock Exchange is the youngest member of the JSE group. We are the babies, or the baby. We were launched um, in 2019 at the annual conference in January, where we had selected, at that time, we would have started selected five projects that we wanted to bring to the market that we thought were worthy of support from the market. What market am I talking about? Correct? <laughs> okay, let me just bring a clarity. The JSE is a market for private sector companies. The JSSE has a virtual market, meaning we have a platform online, so there's access 24 seven, which facilitates the social sector. So we have a market now that has been set up that's dedicated for the social sector, which um, accounts for possibly as much as 5% of the Jamaican economy, but we really believe that that should be grown and can be grown to be a much more significant factor to growth and development in Jamaica. So um, I gather before I joined the picture at the Stock Exchange, as far back as 2010, the vision of the Stock Exchange was always to see sustainability in the development of the nation. So they became a member of what was formed at United Nations, a group called Sustainable Stock Exchanges. And out of that initial vision, all the way back then, we now have the Social Stock Exchange that is basically um, funded by and large by the Stock Exchange. Um, what I'm really excited about is that I think the vision that the Stock Exchange has for this sector is also a vision shared by other persons, other entities, such as our international development partners, namely the International Development Bank operating in Jamaica has just partnered with us to fund capacity building of the stock exchange, the social stock exchange and players in the social sector to the tune of 420,000 US. And we are now on track to see that capacity built out on our social stock exchange to facilitate persons who want to do good, who want to invest in the social sector, also to be able to possibly earn a return on the equity that they would put into the social sector. That is probably the most exciting thing for me right now today. But I can back up a little bit to say that prior to getting to this point where we're now looking to open that second market, we do have the first market for our not-for-profits. We have five projects that were selected from social entities that are properly registered, properly incorporated, well-run, and who, which went through a selection process at the Social Stock Exchange and were chosen to be put to market, to be funded. Those five projects are on our platform. We're proud to say that we have had the support to see one of the five so far fully funded. That is our DEF CAN project, which exclusively 
um, facilitates the deaf community through their farming operation and their barrister service operation. That project was fund, funded to the tune of 43,000 pounds from the market. And so we just wanna give a shout out to all who supported the Deaf Guide project. However, we do have four other projects that are listed on the exchange that um, we are desirous of having support from the market in the DAS fund. If you wish, I could tell you about them right now, or if you want to have me speak to it later. I, I would say, go ahead, Nora. Let's, go let's ahead, say, okay. Yes, go ahead. So we have, we have a project in the inner city community of Trenchtown based there called Agency for Inner City Renewal. Um, that's the social entity. They have a project that anchors itself around a music facility called the Jamaica Music Institute that's located in Trenchtown. And that project is listed where they're trying to situate to the world travel market, Trenchtown as the birthplace of reggae music so that anyone who visits Jamaica should have a desire, first of all, to come to Jamaica, to, sorry, visiting Jamaica to come to Kingston, having seen Kingston designated by the United Nations as a city, creative city of music, and to have us listed on the World Heritage Group as a place that is um, with a culture to be preserved, that they would want to go to the birthplace where all of this started, which is often seen as entrenched out. They have a project where they have therefore this travel um, company to facilitate tours into the Trenchtown community to explore the lifestyle that has given birth to our culture that the whole world has an appetite for. Um, associated with that, you're talking about employment to all the persons, possible employment to all the persons who live in the community, people who are entrepreneurial, who could provide goods and services to the visitors who will come. That project is there. We also mm -hmm. have another project that is closely linked to our culture. And I believe most who will view this or who will hear us will know of the Alpha Institute. Alpha is an iconic institute in Jamaica that has served well over disenfranchised young boys. And over the years, they have produced iconic Jamaican musicians, Ernie Wrangling, Yellow Man, and a host of others. In fact, it is probably seen as the home of Skia in terms of where it has been nurtured in the studio. And they now want to expand the program to be able to accommodate another 100 boys from over maybe 20 communities in Jamaica. They want to build a new music school at the Alpha. For that, we are in the market seeking contribution of 100, approximately 109,000 pounds. Yes, notice I'm quoting for you in pounds. So it's easier for your audience to do their contribution <laughs> as we speak. Yes, we have another program <laughs> called Choose Life. Now this one is really something that touches the heart in that Choose Life is about seeking to facilitate persons handling their emotional issues, their issues of um, how to negotiate and arbitrate their differences, and particularly how to cope with the strains of life that's causing an increase, an uptick in the level of suicides that we've been seeing in our nation, unfortunately. So Choose Life, they have a program where they want to be able to build out the capacity for about 2,000 ambassadors that will be spread all over the country, fully trained. That's their goal, that's their mission, that's their vision. Their program is seeking 135,000 pounds from the market. So they're there on the platform. We have vetted their plan and we have given them the stamp of approval and believe it's worthy of support from the diaspora. And then we have um, another one, which is again, it's not culture, it's really a heart issue. This is for our young people, Spring Praise Jamaica. They work in the schools seeking to ground our young people, giving them um, opportunity to understand the values 
that will ground them as Jamaicans, who they are, the values that will help them to cope in life. But what is very interesting about the program is that the program is operating through the schools in, in the secondary schools in Jamaica, and they're using the method of transmitting the information and training is through the creative arts and through the music and drama. So you know our teenagers, our young people, you can't chalk and talk. You have to meet them where they are. So this program is gonna be very good with that. They, ju they just need like 90,000 pounds for us to help them to get this program as well established in the secondary schools. So overall, we have a total of, when we came to market, we needed 500,000 pounds for the five projects. As I said, we're happy to announce that we have already funded the DEFCAN project. And so that is now pulled off the market and about to be executed, which is to see the growth of their farm. They had set up a pilot farm to grow the coffee for their coffee business, which is a backward integration for them. They were just providing the coffee service before. Now they want to actually provide the beans. So um, it is really a very exciting place that we are. And we're looking to see now DEFCAN and others like DEFCAN if they will scale up and we want to help them. And that's what our project with the IDB is about. We'll be able to help them to build that capacity to be able to come to the market, to seek equity, to list on our second market, which should be established over the next year. And I know that that is particularly interesting for the diaspora who over the generations have been given, but here's a possibility of doing good and also you doing well as you do good because your equity can bring you a return now with this market that we have set up in the social stock exchange. How exciting is that? Nora, can you hear me? Very, 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 very exciting. Uh, hello, hello, Professor hello. Yeah, Let's in. check in if everybody is hearing me. Yes, well, we're hearing yes, you, sir. Professor Ying. Okay. All right, so we're in the uh, middle Good morning, of, um, everyone. Good evening to those in London and the rest of the UK. Nathaniel, is it night or evening over there? <laughs> it's, 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 it's evening. It's, it's evening time, Professor Yeager. Yeah, we're just in the middle of Nora's presentation. I so, heard, but I just, I'm testing out my system here to make sure I can join you. <laughs> all right, sir. Yes, we're hearing you loud and clear, bro. All right, so I'll just, I'll just mute my mic that. All right, thank you, thank you, bro. And, um, Going back to a little bit of excitement from, from Nora. Um, the questions are okay. popping up. Are popping up in the... Nora, the questions yes. are popping up already, but um, you yes. know, as promised that like... we will do the presentations, then go to the questions after. Continue. Okay. okay, well, basically I have said what I want to say, except to say that apart from those five projects that were initially selected by our selection and listing committee, um, at the end of 2019, um, a special situation arose where the missionaries of the poor operate um, various charities across the island. And right here in downtown Kingston, where we're based at the Stock Exchange, very close to us on Tower Street, one of the facilities, the um, Good Shepherd Home for the Homeless, had a fire which totally destroyed it. An approach was made to our parent company, the Stock Exchange, for assistance. And as good corporate citizens, the Stock Exchange did step up to the plate and made a contribution towards the cause. But beyond that, the Stock Exchange looked to the social Stock Exchange and thought we could also do something to help. So we had an appeal on the social Stock Exchange platform to assist that program, the Rebuild Good Shepherd Home. And fast forward a little bit now to 2020, we were just about to start implementing the DEFCAN program, having had them fully funded when COVID made its appearance. And with the appearance of COVID, you know that meant that we had a pandemic crisis. Again, the Social Stock Exchange thought and felt and did what it had to do, which was we kicked into action and also did a special appeal 
through our platform for the COVID-19 crisis, where we selected two projects from the social sector or with projects with social mission that are actually MSMEs, meaning they're small entities. And those two projects, we are actually gonna talk a little bit more later to your audience because that is still current in terms of a special appeal that we're doing on the social stock exchange. Do you want me to continue, moderator? I'll, I'll finish your point, uh, Nora, um, so that we have the wealth, the wealth of information about the Jamaica Social Stock Exchange. So when we go into the question and answer segment, you know, people are pretty much um, clear on what sure. you're responding sure. to. So what I probably want to say as I finish the introductory um, idea of the social stock exchange is that the stock exchange, it's a virtual platform, meaning you don't have to come to Jamaica to do this. You can go online at any time, 24 seven to jssejja.com. That's our platform. And on the platform, it's a simple process. You are required to register yourself as a social donor and when you do that, you are able to select the project that you would, you click on project, you are able now to donate whatever you wish to donate to any of the projects that are listed on the platform. There's a minimum transaction that is required using a credit card of 20 US. Um, I'm sorry, I have not converted that to pounds, but I think US is a universal currency. So even in the UK, for your people who are in the UK, um, they could do that. Um, the projects are there and it is for the persons to choose. It's like you go shopping on Amazon, you click, on your product line and you choose what you want to buy. So it's like a crowdfunding scenario where you are coming to the, the shop where the projects are, you choose which product, pro, which projects, which products you want. And so you purchase, you go to the cart, use your credit card and pay. I can point out to you also that you're able to use the PayPal system we also have that facilitation on the platform. So it's either any major credit card or the PayPal system, which can be used to do the transaction to support the project. Now, let me just point out that on this market, this first market that we're operating, the initial market, this is, as I said, like a crowdfunding model. So there's not going to be a financial return. All right, so the return from this market is going to be that social impact that is made, the return on your social investment to create that vision 2030 Jamaica, the place that we believe all of our diaspora will eventually want to come back to live and to do business and to raise families, okay? Um, so you know now how to make your contribution to the projects and in the first market, it's as simple, as simple as a click away at jssejja.com. Now, what is critical to note also is that we have our COVID appeal for our two projects that are still live. So I'm gonna ask persons when they go on the platform to look at the COVID relief effort where you'll find the um, team challenge um, project, as well as you will find a project that is based up at the University of the Mona campus called Mona Tech Engineering, where they're actually doing a significant work in the COVID crisis of repairing ventilators, repairing ventilators that are actually here on the island in the hospitals and other biomedical equipment and getting them back up and running. And they have done, I think, up to 14 pieces of equipment so far since we've started to assist. All over the islands, these are placed. So that's where we are now doing crowdfunding. But I must highlight that beyond that, we are coming with the impact, the social entities that have a social mission, but they will be seeking equity to be able to expand and to do their purpose, fulfill their mission with the possibility of bringing a return on that investment to the social donor or social investor, sorry. Thank you very much, Nora. Very insightful and of course, thought provoking presentation as how you can get involved in the Jamaica Social Stock Exchange. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there are quite a few 
questions being um, posted in the chat and I, I would advise you, yes, please go to the chat and put the questions in there. We have got quite a few questions coming from the other portals that we have um, put this out on and those will be fielded to the respective professionals. I kept myself quite unbiased in this forum. So if you ask me any question as the moderator, I will be deflecting. So let us be clear, I will be deflecting. So we have a great panel um, of individuals, professionals to answer your questions. And at this time, we'll introduce Mr. Nathaniel Pete, um, just by name, introduce him by name, and he will delve in his title, his accomplishments and his position on this webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, thumbs up, hands clap for Nathaniel Pete. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good night, good morning, <laughs> because I know we're streaming on Jamaicans.com, also Jamaicans Inspired. So there's people from all over the world which are zoning into this very dynamic conversation around investments. Now, money moves in different directions, of course. And um, when you can have profit with purpose, that even means more because we have a social stock exchange, which you have the ability to put into on that first exchange, as Mrs. Blake, Ms. Blake had actually explained, and then go into that second one, whereby you can now look at a return on investment. My name is Nathaniel Pete. I'm the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council representative for the South of the United Kingdom, with the responsibilities of really mobilizing the diaspora, supporting the diaspora, reconnecting the diaspora back to the heritage of Jamaica, opening up opportunities in terms of investment, in terms of social impact, and also then as an advisory service that is provided to the government of Jamaica through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. I'm also the chairman of Jamaicans Inspired, which uh, is the platform to which we are partnered with Jamaicans.com to bring this seminar alongside the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Now, having money grow for you is very essential and, and really just to testify to the ability of you to earn cash flow, where you're speaking about um, for the last four years, one of the best performing stock exchanges in the world, according to Bloomberg and other um, assessments of this market. You know, you're talking about getting money back from what you have actually invested. And, you know, opportunities are never lost. They're only given to other people. So this is the time really to step into that opportunity of creating that platform whilst the markets are low. Now, I know this from my own trades. When I do my own trading, I, in, I put money into, into barrels of oil when it hit zero in the United States. And then you had in five weeks later or three weeks later, then those barrels of oil, then the price just went right the way through the roof. And so right now, is a, it's a viable time for this type of conversation as we're moving through the COVID crisis. Um, and as the world is beginning to get back on track, now is the time to really put money into a, a market like this, whereby through the stock exchange, you have the ability to earn income, as well as looking at ways in which you can create an impact through um, the social projects that exist um, within Within the diaspora, there is, you know, a, a, a way in which you now can can look at getting a cream of of of, of the the stocks through the various different companies, and and you're looking now at returns sometimes which are more than returns you get on other markets with gold, um, in the Jamaican stock exchange. This is this is something which I believe everybody should jump on right now, and I believe that um, now is the time to learn. Now is the time to to share. Now is the time to to encourage people within the diaspora to engage within the Jamaican Stock Exchange, which is one of the reasons why we have done this in partnership with the Jamaican Stock Exchange. Once the COVID crisis has finished, we will be helping to facilitate workshops for the Jamaican Stock Exchange to come over to the United Kingdom to go into the respective regions, whether that be in the United States with the partners that they have there or in Canada, at, for these workshops, which they can engage you as the diaspora in how to invest into the stock exchange and how to be involved directly within the social stock exchange. Um, <clears throat> and so, as I said before, you know, we are in a challenging time. Um, these are challenging times that we're in. And, you know, oftentimes we, we look at these challenges as being obstacles, um, you know, that will knock us down. But I say this, that when there are obstacles on the road, it means that the road is going somewhere. So in the sense of having these obstacles, it is now for us to become equipped with the mentality and the mindset and the knowledge 
of how now to trade and how to then be involved within a dynamic stock exchange that the rest of the world is really focused on. The magnifying glass is on the Jamaican stock exchange. And this is a time now for us to actually be involved directly within that. Um, so I will be coming back in again a bit later, I think moderator, uh, but at this time I'll probably introduce my, my colleague who is actually in the North of England. Um, and he is also a member of the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council as the Northern Rep. Um, he is also the chairman of JD UK, Jamaica Diaspora UK, uh, based in the North of England. And uh, we share this role of looking after the United Kingdom diaspora through the, the Global Jamaica Diaspora community and the council. And so I'd like to now introduce Dr. Kevin Brown, who will now introduce himself and speak a little bit about his opinion regarding this great opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Nathaniel. And uh, good afternoon to everyone, uh, especially those in Jamaica. I wish I was there in the sunshine. Um, but I'm told that the weather in the UK will be improving uh, as of tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to what we're calling a heat wave uh, uh, on my side of the planet. Um, yeah, as, as Nathaniel said, um, I'm Dr. Kevin Brown. I'm chairman of the Jamaican Diaspora UK, which is a national diaspora organization um, that was established uh, way back in 2005. And we seek to promote the interests of Jamaicans living in the UK, but also to assist Jamaica in nation, nation um, building. Uh, I'm also the UK North representative on the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council, which is a, a consultative council um, hosted by the Jamaica Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. Um, and I've been involved in diaspora activities now for the last 15 years and um, continue to do so because I think the diaspora is an important part of the Jamaican story. Um, almost the same number of people who live in Jamaica live outside Jamaica. That's almost 3 million people spread across the globe, but primarily in Canada, U the UK and uh, America. And we have been contributing significantly to Jamaica via remittances. Uh, we spend, we send home around 2.5 billion US dollars to Jamaica. And I think it's timely to be having a conversation around the stock exchange and not more novel ideas like the social stock exchange to sort of give uh, Jamaicans overseas um, other options in terms of how they can invest in Jamaica. If you look at how Jamaicans um, spend the remittance, uh, which is a significant sum, a lot of it is used just uh, by food and basic amenities. Um, and what, what we are trying to um, suggest to um, Jamaicans in the diaspora is to look again at uh, how you utilize the monies that you send home. You know, maybe perhaps we should now be looking at diversifying uh, our investments and the stock exchange, I'm sure, uh, could be a part of that diversification. And of course, a lot of us in the, are pleased and happy to hear of the global success of the Jamaica Stock Exchange. You know, there's no one prouder than a Jamaican. And especially when we heard that our stock exchange was number one a lot of us were pretty happy and boastful about it, you know. So uh, we, we hope that the stock exchange will recover um, once we emerge from this COVID-19 pandemic. Um, there's a lot more conversation within the diaspora. So in the UK, a lot more people are talking about the stock exchange. And I think because of the success of the Jamaica Stock Exchange, people are now looking more closely at it. But I want to just uh, look at a few challenges um, that we perhaps need to touch on in this uh, conversation. One is, is, is to challenge and break down our current mindset around finance. And this is a personal story for myself as well, because a lot of Jamaicans, I'm sure, even today are still being told that the key to success is to go to school, get a very good education and find a good job. We need to change that narrative. My parents told me that story and most of my friends were given the same advice. And guess what? I spent years in school, you know, and, uh, and, and I, I don't regret, regret it. Education has certainly given me a fantastic platform career-wise, but I had no financial education whatsoever. And yes, I got a decent job, but then I, 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 in terms of investments, et cetera, it's something that I have learned much later in life. 
And I think for the growing success of the Jamaica Stock Exchange, we now need to have an educational um, program, which I'm sure is probably happening in Jamaica, but now we need to target the diaspora. And Nathaniel referred to perhaps upcoming events that will promote that education. We need to tell the diaspora and teach the diaspora about finance. And that is not just about education. Great, get a good education, but going to then work nine to five is not the end goal. It's the beginning. And we should now be looking at investment. We should now be looking at portfolio careers in terms of having multiple streams of income and the stock exchange being part of your investment portfolio. And of course, the Jamaican Stock Exchange, because of its success, being a, a good candidate for investment. Um, so that educational program has to happen. I would even go further and say that we now need to look at the Jamaica education curriculum and insert financial education in that curriculum so that, that, uh, that Jamaican students graduate knowing about the stock exchange, how it works, what it is, and how to, to capitalize on, on their investment. Don't wait until they leave school and somehow accidentally discover that there is such a thing as stocks and shares. Um, the other thing I, I would say on, in, uh, touch on uh, briefly is the, this novelty called the Jamaica Stock, uh, Social Stock Exchange. Um, it was launched, as you said, at the Diaspora Conference last year, and I was lucky enough to be at the conference in Kingston and learn about this uh, new initiative. And I, I welcome it. You know, I appreciate the description given by Nora. It was quite informative and, and, um, and uh, you know, it was um, quite clear what this uh, social stock exchange is all about. Um, now, the question is, how does how the diaspora, without question, is very philanthropic towards Jamaica. Um, but, but, but how do they actually give? A lot of diaspora, be, whether individuals or organizations give directly to Jamaica. They prefer to identify their own projects and uh, march forward with it, whether fundraising uh, uh, within their, their the country where they live, and then taking the money or equipment or, or whatever they've decided to give directly to um, the organization that they're going to support. Um, so now you're asking them to sort of rewire how they give by putting their investment through a social stock exchange. Now, uh, I'm sure um, many of us in the diaspora will be open to the idea, uh, but again, we will need to educate them and we will need to somehow reinforce a level of trust that your money will go where it's meant to, to, to go and we will, we will be able to monitor and follow these projects as they go through the process of um, you know, becoming a fully a well-established um, social enterprise, right? So I think we just need to ensure that, um, you know, it's not just about asking the diaspora to give, but also ensuring that we are, we, are, we are considering how we establish trust between the diaspora and the social stock exchange so that uh, people can feel that uh, the money is being donated will be put to good use. And hence why a lot of the diaspora, as I said, prefer to give directly because they know that, yes, I'm going to be the one giving this equipment or money to whoever I want. So I think, I think again, you know, as long as we have a roadmap towards educating the diaspora uh, on how this whole uh, stock exchange, the social stock exchange will work, then, then I think that, again, I'm sure uh, the diaspora will play its part. So, you know, I'm excited about this panel, this conversation. I hope that this will be one of many and uh, conversations around investing in Jamaica. And I look forward to when the pandemic restrictions are lifted and we can welcome members of the Stock Exchange and the Social Stock Exchange to the UK, take them on that tour that Nathaniel spoke about around the UK so that they, uh, you know, we can meet you, ask our questions and, and discuss how we can participate. So, um, but nonetheless, you know, such mediums such as this virtual uh, uh, discussion is, is useful. And um, I, you know, I'm thankful to the organizers for putting it on. So I look forward to the rest of the, the, rest of the conversation. Thank you very much, Dr. Kevin Brown, uh, bringing some amount of criticality to the discussion um, this afternoon, uh, this morning for some in other parts of the diaspora. Now, it is quite important for us to understand our, our nature, the nature of the diaspora is, is love Jamaica first. And I would like to um, deposit 
that within this forum, I can say majority of you here have some amount of affinity to Jamaica and can relate to some of the, the social ills that presents itself, but also can connect with the great things that is within Jamaica itself. And I look forward to when we go to Jamaica again, that Dr. Kevin Brown will, will book his place in Trench Town, spend two nights in Trench Town and be a part of that great reggae, um, birth, <laughs> I'd say the birthright of reggae, that experience. Uh, we have explored the what and the why. We're now at the, at the point where it's the how. And we're going to bring together all of the discuss into the how. And this is the point where I introduce to you Victoria Mitchell Wealth Management, um, their advisor joining us today, Daniel Ashley Jacobs. Ladies and gentlemen, thumbs up, hands clap as we welcome Daniel. Welcome, Daniel. Hi, thank you. Good afternoon, all. So as our moderator stated, um, we spoke about opportunities. Now we want to get into how we can go ahead and take these, these, these opportunities. Just pardon me as I share my screen. I have a little presentation here for you. Right, so... Right, sorry about that. So VM Wealth Management is a subsidiary of VMIL, a member of the Victoria Mutual Group of Companies. We've actually been around for 140 years, right? We commenced operations as Alpha Financial Services in 1994. We have over 25 years of experience in the industry in investment services. We are a licensed securities dealer the FSC and a member of the Jamaica Stock Exchange. VMIL actually listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange main market on December 29, 2017. Now, how to open an account at VM Wealth? All you will need are valid identification that can be in the form of a passport or a driver's license. You will need a TRN, which if you don't have one, you can actually go online and apply for one. You will also need proof of address, which can come in the form of a utility bill, credit card or bank statement or a postmarked envelope. You will also need proof of income that can come in the form of a pay slip or a job letter. You will also need to give us references. The names and numbers are fine. So under references, you can use a principal of a school, a JP, a notary public, a lawyer, minister of religion, medical doctor. You can use your employer. You can use senior officers of financial institutions. You can also use permanent staff of the VM group. Along with these documents, we will provide to you forms for completion and submission. So that's your account opening form, your client information form, the agreement, electronic indemnity. We also will give you the telephone reference forms for if you're giving us the names and numbers, as well as if it is that you don't have any bills or postmark envelopes, we will provide a verification of address form for you so that can be signed by a JP or parent or guardian in the case of a minor. Just a few things to note. When opening an account with VM Wealth, you really should be 18 years or over. Um, when open, or what you'd have to do is open the account with an adult. In the case of a minor, what you want to do is to submit your passport or your birth certificate with a no notarized copy um, of a, a passport size photo. You want to also submit your verification of address, which as I would have mentioned before, can be signed by the parents or guardian or a notary public. The document submitted will be accepted electronically once notarized. So you don't need to be concerned about how to submit the documents, how to get the documents to us. 
although they're being um, submitted electronically, what you want to do is send same by a mail or you can drop them off at one of our VMBS locations overseas, right? Note all the forms have to be notarized or they can be witnessed by the Jamaican embassy in the UK and verifications will definitely be done where necessary. So the locations that you can submit the documents here, we have the Brixton office, Tottenham office, and the Birmingham office. You can get further details on that on the website. Now, once you have submitted the, the account opening forms and we move to open the account, the next thing you want to do is to fund the account. You can do this by doing wire transfers, money transfer options. Usually the banking details are provided once the documents are submitted and the account is open. Generally speaking, for deposits over um, 800,000 Jamaican dollars or British equivalent, proof of source of funds will be requested to ensure that you have that on hand. Now we're going into operating the account. Now, what you want to do is start executing the trade. So a JCSD account will be created for you that will be used to enter the trades on the market on your behalf and it's used to hold the shares that you have acquired. How to get the trades executed? You can send an email or you can give a notarized um, written instruction or you can actually use the Jamaica Stock Exchange online trading portal known as JTrader Pro. So with JTrader Pro, what you need to do is to register your account um, through the portal. You'll be able to monitor market activity um, on, the, on, the, on the portal. What that will allow you to do is to manage your own stock portfolio by buying and, se buying and selling stocks. If you can see what is happening, then you have a better idea of what stocks um, you can buy, what to sell, etc. What you can also do on the portal is to review the statements. So I have the link here. What I will do is send it in the chat of how you can actually sign up um, on the platform account is opened. On the platform, you can also um, do funding requests and fund out requests. It is how funds will be released to your account for, for trading and how you can initiate disbursements to your accounts. There are also tips provided by the Jamaica Stock Exchange on the page and a user guide video. So it will walk you through their YouTube videos that will walk you through step by step how to sign up, how to do your funding requests, etc. Now, for trading at VM Wealth specifically, um, fees will vary with different brokers. But for VM Wealth specifically, if a transaction is being executed in house, meaning you're emailing us the instructions or you're submitting written instructions, we would charge a 2% commission fee as well as the standard fee across the board, says that as from stock exchange, 0.33% plus GCT. However, if it is that you're doing the transactions on JTrader Pro, you are actually charged 0.75% plus GCT, considerably lower than the 2%. So you may want to take advantage of JTrader Pro. So at VM Wealth, um, just a little bit about what you can expect from us. So there are wealth advisors that are assigned to every new account. So they will guide you through the process. In, um, we will also provide weekly updates and daily updates on market happening. You will also be getting updates regarding new IPOs, new opportunities that you can take. As well as um, you will be able to get prompt ex execution of orders personal service and follow through. You'll be able to access research and daily trade summary information. We post our weekly stock picks on our website um, every week. So you'll, you'll get options, recommendations through that manner. The next thing is that I just want to leave some contact information for you. So if you have a questions after or want to proceed with opening the account, what you can do is contact myself at 9605000 extension 5485, or you can actually contact me by email at daniel-ashley.jacobs at myvmgroup.com. You can also contact Tamara Wall Douglas at 
and via her, her email address. The website is also there, um, vmwell.vmbs.com. I, again, I will just post these things in the chat so you'll have access to it, so we can um, have a conversation thereafter. Thank you very much, Danielle. <laughs> Thank you. And um, there's there's a lot of questions for you as well, Danielle. Um, oh. So <laughs> you need to, to now put on your, your strong Jamaican, um, I would say, summer, summer persona to take on some of these um, questions that will be um, coming your way. Now we have um, Professor Ying, um, uh, who is in, in the webinar, and there is a, a video that will be shown. Uh, we have a little base understanding of social exchange. And then we will go back to the entry first that will um, put some amount of adhesive on so ladies and gentlemen we will go to this presentation and then we will come back to mrs marlene street forest managing director of the jamaica stock exchange <laughs> My fellow Jamaicans at home and abroad, Jamaica Social Stock Exchange needs your help to assist micro and small businesses which have been negatively affected by COVID-19. We are inviting your financial support for Bonotech Engineering Services and Team Challenge. Bonotech Engineering Services is currently focusing on repairing ventilators and monitoring machines for all hospitals island-wide. Teen Challenge Jamaica caters to at-risk youth with drug addiction problems. Please visit the Jamaica Social Stock Exchange website at jssejaa.com for details on how to make your donations. Thank you. Thank you. And we have Professor Ying, um, who's joining us. I would like to invite Professor Ying um, to lend a voice to this webinar. Um, just before we go back to Mr. Smart's report, Professor Ying, uh, can we have you in the Hello, Professor Ying. You're unmuted, bro. Until um, prof, um, until he picks up, we'll go we we'll go directly to Mrs. Marlin Street Forest until Prof comes in. Mrs. Street Forest. Um, I'm not sure what you um, are expecting of me at this point. All right. But, so, um, yeah, go ahead. So in terms of what was said um, through Victoria Mutual Wealth Management on the whole, um, getting that account ready, yeah. um, what is the next move? What, 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 what stimulants would you, you put in? What, what role does the JSC play once an individual has got their record? I think Danielle has given a very, very good um, foundation as to what is supposed to be done. And what she has spoken about is what um, VM does within their office. And also um, in talking about the accounts, she's speaking about what the JCSD, that's the Jamaica Central Securities Depository do, because an account is created at our subsidiary called the Jamaica Central Securities Depository. I would just like to expand on that to say that once that account is created, then it is a free movement, so to speak, of the buying and selling of the securities. And each, individ each investor who has an account with a JCSD can immediately know what their portfolio looks like. They, they will sign up online to ask for an, um, an online statement. And on a daily basis, they can look 
to see that it corresponds, one, with what uh, the broker is saying, and two, they can have a running idea as to what their portfolio is like. And we encourage people to do that. I know that we have in the diaspora some persons who would have had the physical um, certificates in their hands in terms of um, the companies that they would have invested in. And what we encourage at the JCSD is that you take those into the broker so that um, the registrar for those companies will be able to um, immobilize those securities in the JCSD, meaning that you can call for your, your paper security if you want. But what that does is when it is in the JCSD, you can easily have access to it. You can pledge those securities. Should you want to buy some other securities or do something else, you don't have to sell, especially in the, this area of COVID. If you are looking now and you say, probably, I don't really want to sell my securities, but there is something, some need that I have, you could pledge those securities so that when the market um, picks up, you would not have lots on selling those securities. You still have them. And um, so that is what um, we do. But I want to go back to Dr. Brown, is it? Yes, Dr. Um, yes. Yeah, Dr. Brown in terms of market education to say that the Jamaica Stock Exchange over the last three or four years, we have been to UK twice because we see you as partners in the growth, one to have to get that wealth that is created in Jamaica, but also just the continuous growth of Jamaica. And we, we had actually planned before COVID to come in July, but this forum is very a very good forum in terms of widening um, the reach that we could have. So yes, we are going to be moving towards more digital um, um, audience and, and workshops. And just to also say that we, to access what we have, we have the JCE campus that um, members of the diaspora, and we are inviting them to go to our e campus and see our offerings that we have in terms of market education. We also have the school program, which is the stock market game. Now this is for, for students within Jamaica, but why not? It can be broadened to students within UK. So, you know, there could be cross, cross border competitions between schools there and schools here. So these are some things that we really need to talk about and we do have the stock market game which is a public game so anyone within Jamaica or the diaspora can also participate in that public game which gives you um, the an appreciation of um, how to um, buy stocks you know just get gaining an understanding and finally in keeping with um, Dr. Brown's comment um, is that we are pushing for the information with, with about the stock market to be in, embedded in the curriculum for um, schools and tertiary institutions. Awesome. Uh, that is one good um, pull out from, from this webinar that we, we could definitely lend focus on uh, for, for that to be operation. Um, a lot of the questions really we get in the sense that it's around education. There is this um, tenderness around the, the the right time to get get involved in the marketplace. That sort of, sort of thing. Is there um, a thing as a climate watch, Mrs. Marlene Street Forest? You know, is is there such a thing? Climate watch. Yes. Yeah, well. Um, we, the, the answer to that is in two parts. Um, one, I'm going to say that we are now encouraging our listed companies to speak about um, issues relating to, and are you talking about physical climate or are you talking about financial climate? Financial That's climate it. doesn't really, yes, financial climate. Financial climate. So let us, let us go to that. So we have already written to our listed companies 
to say what you need to do, and it has been coming in, that you need to provide um, us with information on how you see yourself navigating through the, um, the, the COVID pandemic and beyond. And they have been sending in this information and it is also posted on our exchange because we understand that it is important that if you are investing in these companies, you need to know um, what is the sustainable actions they are going to be taking in order to ensure that persons' investments are secure. But in talking about climate in general, this stock exchange will also be looking at um, general climate, and we will shortly be telling you about um, the climate bonds that we will be um, looking to develop that market around. Yes, so those two. <laughs> But I um I thought I was was trying to be a little bit unbiased there by mentioning climate, but yeah, though no, um if I if I pulled you too far forward, um this forum is definitely for that, uh, so I will apologize just just a little bit, but not entirely. Um, it's good to to have um, that sort of insight, and this is what sure. this forum uh, brings. Most definitely, it, it it brings this face to face. Although it is, it may seem um, virtual, it is a conversation that needs to be had um, with the diaspora as we move forward with partnerships. Um, the, the next thing is why, why Bloomberg has, you know, laid that great label on the JSC? Why, why, why? So that is now being pulled out on you. So they have not laid the, the label and the accolade on us. Um, Jamaica, has worked for it and has gained it. Great. So what, what, what Bloomberg did of 92, I think 92 or 96 um, stock exchanges around the world that are recognized, and I want to emphasize and underscore um, recognition. Um, and we are recognized because of how well we regulate the market, our technology relating to the market, and also um, the fact that there, one can see that the stock exchange underpinning the principles that we have. So it's not any exchange, it's those exchanges that show that regulatory strength and grit. And so um, apart from that, which they take into consideration, they also now look at the index. And the index is really a measurement of the number of stocks that you have, their shares times their price. And the movement of those prices times shares as easy tells you how far or how fast or the growth of that index. And so our index um, has performed better than any, meaning that the Companies' prices on our exchange has improved compared to others um, more than any other. So that's that's really it in a nutshell. But then we need to go beyond and behind that. And if your prices are going up, it really looks at how well those companies are performing. Absolutely. And which is why even with this COVID, and we must be practical and we know that there will be impact. Our companies have proven, especially because they are listed and they have the, the governance, the, the reporting to shareholders, our companies have shown that they strategically, they have what it takes to grow and to remain resilient. And so Bloomberg, upon looking at that, would have seen the growth base based on price, which is reflected in the price of these companies on the exchange. But I just want to just add one other thing to this. And the stock exchange and the index and our accolade, that did not come just because of the stock exchange and the companies, but also because of the economic climate and infrastructure that we have seen as have 
has improved over this period. The, the government of Jamaica, the government has taken reforms, financial reforms very seriously. And this has also um, factored into the growth of the exchange, the companies, and um, by extension, investors' um, return on investment. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much for that response, uh, Mrs. Marlin Street Forrest. I'll, in, I'll bring Nathaniel Pete in just now. There, there, are a lot, there are lots of questions being asked. I, I'm going to ask as the moderator for the professionals here, the panelists, to just skim through the chat. And if you could answer directly to those individuals, if it means that you will, you will exchange details, um, set that one one on one, um, because this peer discussion is really great. I'm looking at the chat room and the peer discussion is absolutely great. So we'll continue along that vein. But there are some pop out questions that we will be fielding and we'll take about probably four or five from the floor of the participants now. So in, in order of um, raise hands and we will we'll take a few from the floor. But until then, Nathaniel Pete, I'll bring you in. Then you can introduce um, Professor Ying um, for a short, short discussion between yourselves and Miss Nora Blake for the social stock exchange um, bit of it. So uh, that is the, the order for the next session, the next segment. Uh, we don't have a long to go, but it is exciting. This, this, this journey is exciting thus far. So Nathaniel Pete, please. Thank you very much, Corey. Um, a great overview. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Street Forest as well for just breaking all of that down. And um, really just, just put a hand clap together, throw a fire on Facebook do something like a boom or a bang or something because this is exciting. And, you know, the excitement of this, anything that relates to investment in Jamaica or helping Jamaica's growth, I'm excited about. And uh, just really wanna thank everybody that's actually on the forum today. Um, Professor Neville Yink has been somewhat of a mentor to me for many years, in fact, because when I first became engaged in becoming active in the Jamaican diaspora about probably 15 years ago, uh, Professor Neville Ying was really one of those people that was the pioneer and helped to shape the whole diaspora movement. Um, he is um, to many a mentor and um, he is also the chairman of the Jamaica Social Stock Exchange. Um, it is, it is a, a powerful movement that's happening in Jamaica and it's not just Bloomberg, which is actually uh, mentioned the Jamaican Stock Exchange, but in fact, the Financial Times of the United Kingdom has also positioned them as being one of the best performing stock exchanges in the world. And this is now a viable time to engage both in terms of the stock exchange and more importantly, in and within the Jamaica Social Stock Exchange. Before I bring in Professor Neville Ying, um, I want to direct a question to Daniel that's coming from Facebook, um, which has spoken to the idea of how can I invest in Jamaica if I live in Paris, France? Am I able to do that? So yes, you can open an account outside of Jamaica. What you need to do for VM Wealth specifically, what you need to do is secure the documents that can be found on our website. That can be, that can be, that can be found on our website. Um, or if you provide contact details, we can send you the documents directly. You will complete those, have them notarized, and you can stop email. At which point, though, we would expect you to just send the original documents in the mail. So that's how you would open an account without having to come to Jamaica. Okay, just click on the... Um, uh, thank you very much, um, Anna. Thank you very much for that. Um, at this time now, I'm going to bring in uh, Professor Neville Ying. And um, right. Professor Neville Ying, as I said, can you hear me now? We can hear you loud. Thank you very much. Oh, okay, I think Corey took me off a while ago. You see, Corey, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Professor Ying. Yeah, you're on now, hearing you're you loud on. and clear. There are two young guys I've met, they're not so young any longer. <laughs> One we have was Daniel <laughs> and Corey, and uh, believe it or not, they used to be called the young leaders in the diaspora. I don't know what to call him now. I won't say old, but 
That's really been a pleasure working with them. I remember taking them out to um, Flanker. If you remember that, out in Montego Bay. It yes. was a diaspora Definitely. young people uh, was running a project out there to deal with the whole crime situation. So we're going way back. We're not just talking about investments, but actually dealing with you know, serious issues like crime. And I remember the day um, Nathaniel brought PowerPoint presentations and all that. Only to find out that there were no electricity supplies. Anyway, as a creative community, they hooked up somebody's house, um, the current from somebody's house to the center, and Natalia was able to come on. Such is the creativity of our Jamaican people. But it's a pleasure to be back in action with the Jamaica Social Stock Exchange. Um, as Marlene will tell you, I also chair the Best Practices Awards Committee. And that's very important because it's through the best practices that companies do why we achieve the position of the leading stock exchange in the world. <laughs> so there's a correlation between the two things. Um, so Corey, um, moderator, what would you like me to say about the, um, the social stock exchange? Anything that Nora didn't cover? Right, um, let's look at the impact. Um, impact, um, first of all, um, Prof, and then we look at the reason why based on the impact. Well, what we're talking about really is that we have selected five projects to start with because we like to take on very manageable things. So we look at our music and entertainment industry, which it is a very life part of our culture. So we have adopted uh, as one project, the Alpha Institute, which, you know, produce a number of our leading artists in the entertainment field. Then we have Jammin, which is in Trenchtown. And you know, Trenchtown is a mecca of reggae music. But we don't stop there. We look at, uh, more, Nora mentioned Def Can. So we are out trying to provide opportunities for persons from the Deaf community to be gainfully employed. That project has been going extremely well. Then we have um, social problems like tendencies of young people to um, commit suicide. So again, there's a very important project as to how to counsel them out of that kind of behavior to a normal way of life. Then we look at the whole question of how can we build positive attitudes and values in the school system? So that project deals with influencing values and attitudes in the secondary school system in Jamaica. And also at the same time, teaching them how important it is to start saving from early in life. So that's a synopsis of what we're trying to do. We're trying to raise funds to get them started. And at the same time, we're going to do capacity building through a project that the stock exchange has signed with the Inter-American Development Bank. And that's going to be rolled out very shortly. If we didn't have COVID, that would be in line already. But like everything else, everything else is delayed. And so that should come on stream very shortly. The project manager is on board and ready to go. So that's a synopsis and so I'll entertain any questions. Thank you, Professor. Oh, back over to you, Nathaniel. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Ying. Um, and um, of course, you know, age is mind over matter. So if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you, great overview in terms of the opportunity that exists to help these social enterprises, which have been thoroughly kind of gone through in terms of to, sh to show that they have the ability for sustainability and growth. Um, and of course, once these social enterprises reach up to a level whereby we can ha have them on the social impact market, this is where now we can look at then those investments being returned back to those individuals. Um, well, as Marley would probably, or no, would probably explain, we're taking the projects through two phases. The first one is to build them into social business enterprises. The next phase is to get them to the stage where they can actually list on the junior market. So there are two distinct phases of the project. So we just want to give you that trajectory so that you know that when you make donations to these projects, you're taking them along a trajectory which will not only make your money have social impact, but eventually lead them to become 
entrepreneurial activities that can be actually listed in the junior market. And thank you very much, Professor Ying. And of course, it's, it is profit with purpose. So um, as, a non, as they move from the non-for-profit up into the social enterprise, this is where we have now the social impact investment. Um, I'm just going right. to... Just going to bring back on um, Nora, if you could just um, again, just once again, direct them to the location of where they can find the Jamaica Social Stock Exchange. And uh, then I'll hand back over to the moderator as we bring the session to a close. Thank you. Thank you, Nathaniel. It is always my pleasure to lead people to the path and the place where they give into the projects, <laughs> of course. So it's really just a click away. We're always on the web at jssejja.com. There, the um, landing page will open up. You click on projects and you're taken over to the projects page. Simple matter of um, like you're shopping on any of those sites, you choose which project you want to make your donation into. Um, do the relevant input of information and you use your credit card to pay. <laughs> and the transaction is done online and um, you'll receive your receipt and thank you from us. And from there on, you'll be able to, as a registered donor, you'll be able to look at your project once it is fully funded and is now on the platform as a listed project, operationalized to see what's going on. I think somebody in the chat, if I might just add, um, had wanted to know about um, the issue of accountability and um, how the projects will be monitored. Let me just emphasize that, yes, in fact, the nature of the platform, the JSSE platform, offers transparency, accountability, critical to that issue of trust. Because even we know, we're talking as family, even amongst families, between the diaspora and Jamaica here, we know that we have had many a slip between the cup and the lip. So what we want to ensure is that that trust deficit that we have experienced amongst ourselves will never be a part of what we're seeking to do for the social sector, All right? We have definitely put something in place to bridge the gap. So the projects have to, they're mandated, they must report in. Yeah, so the same website, jssejja.com, is where you will be able to see for yourself via videos, photos, as well as reporting, financial reporting, how the project is moving along after you've made your donation into, into these projects. Thank you very much uh, for the very great overview. And, and really for those people who are watching, uh, we, I think we, we topped out at about 81 people online and then we had about uh, 30 on the Facebook, on one Facebook, another 17 on the other. So we've had over 100 people on streaming into this. And um, now really this is an opportunity. And as I began with the opening, when I said uh, opportunities are never lost, they're only given to other people. This is now, a way in which we can really contribute to Jamaica, not only in terms of our finance going into the stock exchange, but also in terms of impact. Um, there is gonna be a slide which will be left at the end, whereby you can reach out to the Jamaica Stock Exchange with all of the connection details. In addition to that, we will be posting on our social media pages, all of the relevant contact details, both for Victoria Mutual Wealth, as well as the Social Stock Exchange and the Stock Exchange, for you to directly engage with them. This is one of many workshops that we're gonna be doing, one of many webinars that we're gonna be doing to mobilize the diaspora, to educate the diaspora, mm -hmm. and to help people to understand. As it is heard around the world through the various different quotations, those who read are the ones that lead. And the more that the Jamaican diaspora knows is the more that we are going to lead. So let us mobilize each other. Let us go forward. Let us champion Jamaica, brand Jamaica, and let us invest in our island, our beloved island, Jamaica. I'll hand back over to now to the host, um, Corey Hyde. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nathaniel. Uh, before we go to what we call the winding down um, session, a lot of questions, as I mentioned, was fielded. 
and I'm going to go through the questions now. I'm just going to read it because of the interest of those who are connected to this forum. They have posted quite a few questions and I want to acknowledge the various sectors that are on this webinar. We have tourism, education, health, transport, agriculture. It, it's well held. Did I mention health and wellness? Well represented on this forum and questions are now being switched to social investment with the with the aim or the purview for it to become more a sustainable income stream so a question like what do you envision or envision to be the biggest growth area in the Jamaican economy over the next five years. So a question like that is forecasting. So what is it? What is the biggest growth area uh, based on interest, based on, on trends? Those are the questions coming in. At what age point in career would you suggest people start to get involved in, in investment? And, and probably, as I said, I will, will be quite um, unbiased here, Start young, start now. I think that is the better answer, start now. How would one go about investing in property in Jamaica? The, the, a myriad of questions, cross, cross sectorial questions coming in. And strong, how do I invest? The, 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 the four words, the four words, how do I invest? That, 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 that's, that's really coming through very strong. As a UK resident, I would like to know step-by-step -step guide to get onto the Jamaica Stock Exchange. I would like to know how it works. Example, is it a way of making money in the long run? Goes, goes into that educating um, the, 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 the populace as, as, as hinted. What are the practical steps I can take right now to get involved? Here comes as a beginner with no experience in investment what to do, how to go about it. These are the things. I would like to learn as much as possible. No questions at present. Thanks. So persons are here just- I have a question. <laughs> okay, I think we're, we're, we have been I jacked a little bit. I think so too. I This, this, this is absolutely not good. All right. Um, Corey, should we just log back in? Do you want us uh, to log back in? Yes, yes. Let, let, let's stop this and log right back in, uh, people. Come on. Yeah, right. yeah. Let's, let's, go, let's go. Let's go. Okay. Let, let's log back in, everyone. Yeah. That is on the screen of a site. <laughs> See, uh, yo, see the porno, porn, porn. <laughs> yo, can you see the porn, man? It's very, very good. <laughs> 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 <laughs>